So now we will explore how this whole situation of the migraine is affecting you. And we will do this in different layers. We will start with you as a physical being. So you can take a little bit of time and ask yourself inside, how is this migraine affecting me in my physical way of being? Hmm. I have to say, it's not easy to be friendly with that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I wake up and immediately the migraine is there and immediately I feel sick and, and I cannot even move. Uh -huh. it's, it's, it's terrible. I, I'm stiff and stay in bed and I cannot bear any sound or light. Uh -huh. it, it's, I cannot do all the things that I would like to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like being in prison, really. Okay, okay. Yeah, I feel frozen, immobilized. Mm -hmm. the, the only thing I can do is lie in the darkness and wait for the medication to work. A and maybe it gets better. Okay. Oh, and there are so many days like that in my life. So that's a real terrible situation. Mm -hmm. Being imprisoned, mm -hmm. not being not able to move. Mm -hmm. So lying in the darkness and just waiting until the sickness is over. Yes, yeah. yes. So. Mm -hmm. And you said it's yeah. difficult to stay in a friendly way with your body in this suffering. Mm -hmm. May I invite you just to try? How does it affect you when you can just be with yourself with all this suffering like you are sometimes with your grandchild. So if you imagine having this attitude you have towards your grand grandchild when it is suffering, mm -hmm. when you apply that attitude to yourself, mm -hmm. how, how does that affect you? Oh, my grandchild, that's easy to, to feel tenderness and, and mm -hmm. be very okay. yeah, tender with her. But okay. Doing that for myself? Yes, I do understand that's more difficult. Yeah, yes. But give yourself some time to try it and just experience whether there is some change when you try to be friendly with your physical being and the way you have to suffer. You know, I often, I often try to have some rational thoughts as okay my body needs a pose and and things like that but it's hard mm -hmm. i i i really it moves me when i hear you say it, it's um it is true it it is awful in this prison acknowledging instead of ignoring that makes so much difference. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That was never done in my family. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. You are not used to acknowledge your suffering. Mm -hmm. Okay, and in your family, that was very unusual. Yes. To acknowledge your suffering. Yes, yes. So there you learn to ignore your suffering. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. So... With this issue of your family, we arrived at a social dimension. So maybe you can say a little bit more about your experiences in your family. Mm -hmm. oh. And how was that related to your migraine in some way? You know, in my family, when I think about it, across the generations, everyone either had or, or now has migraine. And, oh. and the only way we learned to cope with it was ignore it and go to school, university, work, but first and foremost, not talk about it. Okay, okay. No one ever knew. We were always hiding the pain. Okay, so you learned not to talk about it. Yeah. And always hide whatever was there. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. So 
This must be unusual for you now then to talk with me about your pain. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. It is. When I'm talking about it, as I do now, there are always these old voices in my head telling me, but don't make it bigger than it is. All people have something that they suffer from. Yes. Of course, that, that's true. All people have something they suffer from. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that it's not all right to talk about it. For me, talking about your suffering is more like a way of being friendly towards yourself and recognizing your suffering can mm -hmm. be a way to improve your well-being. So I just wonder how it is for you now that, that you can feel it's okay to recognize it. Yeah. Yeah, it's sad. Sad? Yes. Okay, okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's sad and... I'm really not used to talk about these things and... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I also feel shame. Okay, okay. So with mm. these feelings of sadness, shame, mm. we arrive in the personal dimensions. So I was wondering your personal feelings around this whole situation of the migraine. You mentioned already your sadness, your shame. Mm. Uh, are there more of your personal feelings that are connected to the situation of the migraine? I um I I there was some curiosity um, um, like wanting to find out how all these things belong together mm -hmm. but now it's it's more or less loneliness loneliness mm -hmm. the loneliness of and not sharing and yeah mm -hmm. yeah and and hopelessness. Hopelessness, yes. Hopelessness mm -hmm. also. Yeah. And you also said your curiosity and hopelessness. I, I was wondering, is there some connection between your curiosity, your hopelessness, or, or what? Or in what way does the migraine take away your hope? You know, I, I always hope for something from the outside to, mm. to come and, and take away okay. the pain or, or that it just simply will go away over, overnight. Mm -hmm. Of course, you yeah. hope that there uh, is something that can help you and that it will stop. The mm -hmm. suffering. Yeah. Yeah. But you say you are always looking at the outside. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and I know it's naive. Uh, but that's what I do. I, I always put trust in something outside me. And, mm -hmm. and that then it, I end up disappointed or deceived, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I never put trust in myself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you discover how you trust the outside and mm -hmm. are hoping for medication or other solutions, but trusting yes. in yourself, that's difficult. I, I, I wonder what could help you to really trust? Hmm. You are looking as if this is a strange question. Yeah, my first idea is I, I, I don't know. Okay. I really don't know. Okay, but it's good to take your time and ask inside. There, in your wiser self, there is sometimes some sense of what you 
trust at a deeper level. Hmm. Then I think of nature. Nature? Yes, like trusting that the seasons in nature have an order. Oh. Like it's easy to trust that after the winter the spring will come. So you experience an order in nature that is bigger than your life. Okay. And that's something you trust. I was wondering how does is that related to your hope? Well, it goes together with the question where is my place in all this? Oh. So, when I stay with the order of life, what could come for me now mm -hmm. in the autumn of my life? Oh, mm -hmm. that's a nice question. Mm -hmm. What could come for you now in the autumn of your life? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. As if that opens up some new perspective or... Uh, yes, it, it's like a relief. Um, oh, it it opens up a, a new approach f to hope for me. Okay, like confidence in nature and belonging to a bigger order. Mm -hmm. So, if you take now a little bit more time to feel, how does that affect you when you just think of this order in nature and an order that's bigger than you, but at the same time, you seem to be part of that order in nature. Mm. So how, how does that affect you? It fills me up with peace. Ah, peace. You can feel peace in that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. That's an, mm. an important spiritual emotion. So we, we arrived in the spiritual dimension very naturally. <laughs> mm. mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you for sharing mm. and for opening up yourself to this yeah. new experience yes. and mm -hmm. giving yourself this new perspective that mm -hmm. is very different from where you started by being imprisoned. Yes, it was. It is. It, it is. And, and thank you for this meeting. It, it really was meaningful and important to me to let a little bit of my feelings, um, yeah, allow it to to be seen and to be witnessed. Uh, uh -huh, uh -huh. I see. Yes, I see. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Because that was very different from what you have always experienced in the past. Yes, indeed. Okay. It is. Thank you very much. You're welcome.